Alrighty, g'day and welcome to another Scratch desktop tutorial. Today we are looking at bullets and enemies. So more or less what we're going to be looking at doing is starting to create a little bit of interactivity for our games where our player is able to shoot a projectile of some variety and we're going to have some enemies moving across the screen. Now obviously we need a couple of different things to happen here. We first of all need a character that we can use. Second of all, we're going to need a sprite that we can recreate as clones over and over again uh, for our projectile. And then the third thing that we are going to need as part of our game is an enemy of some sort who is going to have to have some sort of artificial intelligence. They're not going to be very smart. They're just going to move from one side of the screen to the other. So we're going to jump straight into Scratch this time around and have a look at what that code looks like. And from there, we're going to be building that very simple game interaction. Alrighty, so here we are in Scratch and we are ready to get going. So first things first, we are going to be using our Scratch Cat as our hero today just to keep things interesting. Obviously, if you want to swap that sprite over to anything else you can, that's not very difficult to do. Um, and the code that we're going to put on is going to more or less work on any sprite uh, that we place as our hero. So to start with, we're going to just put down some base code that gets our... Um, scratch cat sitting here where we want it to be. So first things first, obviously we need a when green flag is clicked and then we need to set our rotation style. Now, because we're going to be getting our scratch cat to move up and down, we need that rotation style set to left and right so that that way he doesn't turn and face up when we're, uh, when we're moving around. Uh, from there, what we could also do is we're going to just grab a forever loop to build the majority of our interaction in and then we need three if statements, one for our up button, one for our down button and then uh, one for our space bar which is going to be our button to shoot. Okay, now we'll fill in some of that code in a second. So now that we've got our three if statements set up, we're going to jump down into our sensing menu because that's going to allow us to start to look at what key is pressed. And we're going to just drop this one in. So we're going to have key, uh, and we're going to have up arrow pressed, grab another one of these, down arrow pressed, and a third one which we'll leave as space. Okay, so when our character moves up, we obviously want him to go up. When we click down, we want it to go down. When we press space, we want to press space. Um, we are going to move our scratch cat over to this side of the map though, uh, just so that he starts over here. We might put him in the middle. Um, and then there's no way for our player to actually move the scratch cat further to the right hand side, apart from if they uh, edit things from there. We could put some extra code in here that stops our scratch cat and then at the start of each game it jumps him back to here. Actually, we might do that. So we're just going to say uh, motion and then we're going to say go to x and y and then it's already remembered these coordinates so it's going to do that every time so when we press the green button he's going to jump back there so that's good now for our uh, um, up arrow what we need to do is we need to set our y okay so we're going to just do uh, a nice easy one here so we're just going to say set y position 2 and then i'm going to grab my operators grab the plus button for the up arrow and then I'm just gonna come back in here. Actually, I might grab another one of these, the minus, and just sit it over there, because I'm gonna need that for this. All right, and then I'm gonna have another set Y2. Drop that one in. And then I need to put a Y position in each of these. And, whoops, not there. Where did that operator go? There. You're going to sit there, you're going to sit there, you're now all going to go back in. That's heaps better. And then we're going to tell it how far to move. So we're going to get it to move 10 and 10. Now remember, because we've got the plus sign and the minus sign, that's going to move our character up and down. So nice and easy. We've got if our up arrow is pressed, then we're going to set our Y to our current Y position plus 10. All right, so it's going to move it up 10. And then obviously if the down arrow is pressed, we're going to set our current Y position to, or set our Y position to our current Y position minus 10. So if we quickly have a look at that, press the green button, we press the up key, scratch cap moves up, press the down key, scratch cap moves down. All right, so super simple and easy interaction so far. Now from here, we need to have a look at our spacebar code. And for our spacebar to work, what we need to do is we need another sprite sitting here so that we can create a clone of that sprite each time we press space. So I'm gonna quickly click into the sprite menu and look for something that's round. We might just grab this beach ball here, okay? And then I'm gonna come back into my sprite, uh, my scratch cap over here. 
Now, once the space bar is pressed, as I said, what we want to do is we want to create a quick clone, but not of myself. We want to create the clone of the beach ball, okay? And the thing that we need to be very mindful of here is we're going to need to put in a really, really small weight here, okay? Which is just going to allow the person to press the space bar and let their finger out. Otherwise, what's going to happen is you're going to create a million uh, beach balls all in one go just by holding down the space bar, which we don't really want. All right, so that just sort of stops that happening a little bit. So now that that's done, uh, we need to be able to connect our um, beach ball to our scratch cat, okay? Actually, I'll leave that. I'll come back to that in a second so that that way you can see why we need to do it. So we're gonna jump onto our beach ball here and we're gonna put a little bit of code on. So we're gonna come up and obviously grab our green flag. And when our green flag is clicked, we want this beach ball to change size, but also to hide, okay? And the reason that we want it to hide is because then when we create each of the clones, okay, it'll uh, have some code to show depending on where we are on the screen. So let's jump into our looks menu and we wanna set our size to 20%, I think. Let's have a guess at that. What does that look like? Yeah, that's quite good. That looks like a little bullet now. So we'll set that at 20%. Then we're gonna have it hide. And we are also gonna tell it that it needs to go to, we'll set our X position actually, that'll be quicker. Uh, negative 167. So let's just check that that's gonna do what we want it to without the hide in there. We press this one, cool. So the reason we needed to set this, let's go a little bit further back. Okay, to 175. Whoops, not that far. All right, what do you look like? That's heaps better. The reason we needed to set this X position here is so that we can make it look like the projectile comes out of the scratch cap, okay? Set that one back to hide, and now that goes away. Now, we obviously need to start doing some stuff with our clones. So coming into the control menu, when I start as a clone, the first thing we want it to do is to show, okay? So that's now gonna mean that when we press the space bar, it creates a clone of the beach ball. And then from there, obviously it's going to start and appear just here. All right, then we're gonna get it to move across the screen pretty rapidly. So we're gonna to say to you that we want you to repeat until our X position, I'm gonna just drag this on, is greater than, Uh, and then what do we got? It's normally about 240, so let's call that 235. So until the X position is greater than 235, we want you to just move, uh, maybe not that fast, a little bit slower, five steps. Okay, and then once that's finished, so once that loop finishes and we've got to 235 or above, we wanna delete the clone so that we can't see it. Otherwise, we end up with this like scattered mess of, uh, beach ball sitting over here on the right hand side. So we're gonna come back into the control menu here, grab delete a clone and drop it onto the bottom there. Okay, so now what happens instead, press the space bar and you can see that our um, beach balls go across and when they hit the edge over here, they all delete, which is great. Okay, so more or less we're ready to go, but I wanna show you what the problem is. So at the moment, we can move our scratch cat up and down, which is great, but when we press the space bar, they always start in that same spot, no matter where we are on screen. So that means that we need to now be able to find out what the Y position of our scratch cat is, so that we can then communicate that to our beach ball. And the easiest way to do that is going to be to set up a variable okay, that can be communicated between the two of these things. So it needs to be a global variable. And then that way, Scratch Cat can consistently update that and then the beach ball can move to that position. So the code for this is actually pretty easy. First of all, we need to do is, first of all, we need to come in and grab a variable. So which means we need to make one. So we might call this Y pause. So Y for Y position. And then we're gonna hit okay. So now we have this variable ready to go. We're gonna come into our events and just say again, when the green flag is clicked forever, you are going to set the Y position to our current Y position. Now it seems like we're doing the same thing, but remember that this uh, one here is our scratch cat's Y position. 
we are then setting our y position, our global variable to whatever the same y position is for scratch cat. So if we press play, you can see that it will go up and down and it'll keep changing all the time up here on our little screen. So I'm gonna leave that one on there so that you can see it. Now from there, we're gonna jump back onto our beach ball and the beach ball now needs some extra code. We're just gonna add one little line of code in here and then that's gonna change absolutely everything. So we're gonna come here and say set Y position two and then we're gonna grab our variable and drop that in the box. So now what we're saying here effectively for our beach ball is um, when you start as a clone, you're gonna first of all appear and then you're gonna go to whatever the variable is. So it's gonna set the Y position to that. So now when we press play, we get our bullets appearing wherever Scratch Cat is. So that's much more realistic, okay? Now, the last thing that we wanna do is we wanna set up our enemy, okay? So we're gonna come into our, choose a sprite. I'm just gonna find someone that we can shoot and not feel bad about. What do we got? Ghost, that'll do. So I'm gonna grab the ghost here. It's gonna be over here on the right hand side. And then we need to obviously put a little bit of code there. Now this ghost is very big. So first thing I wanna do is make that much smaller. So when the green flag is clicked, set the size to 30, 30, 30. What does that look like? Uh, maybe we'll make it a bit bigger. A little bit easier target to hit. That's good. So about 40% and then we want you to hide. So we don't wanna actually see you. And then we're gonna make this so that we can keep playing forever. So in the forever loop, we are going to say that we wanna create a clone of myself, because remember this time we're coding the ghost, but we don't want it to happen all the time. Because if we press play now, oh, actually you can't see that. So we'll get rid of the hide. So we press play now. Oh, now I've gotta say show, having a shocker. So you hit show there. Drop that one on, press play, and they don't move. So you can't really tell, but I cannot keep up with all of the ghosts that are appearing on screen because they're happening almost instantaneously. So let's change that code back to how it was. So we're gonna say hide here. All right, now we need to tell it that we want you to wait, say one and a half seconds between making ghosts appear. Okay, and then from there, we want our ghost to appear in like a random spot each time. So whenever we start as a clone, we're gonna say to our, our, um, our ghost that we first of all want you to show, keep this nice and simple. Okay, and then you're going to go to uh, a specific X and Y position. So we want him to appear sort of just off screen. So what do we got, like 240-ish? So we'll call that 240, okay? And then we want it to be a random X position. Now we know that the screen sort of goes, um, it's pretty big. So let's um, come into operators, drop the pick random one onto the X, and then let's actually just say 140 to negative 140. So we're saying you can go sort of 140 pixels above the middle line and 140 pixels below. Okay, so when we press play now, you should see, hopefully, that lots of ghosts start to appear all over the screen. Okay, so that's good. Now we just need them moving. So we are just gonna say that we want you to, in our control menu, uh, repeat until, and we're basically doing uh, the reverse of what happens with our pizza where we wanted it so that when it got to the side over here, it deleted. We're gonna to say to our ghost, if you make it to this side here, you're gonna delete over there. So we're gonna do the same sort of thing. So in our operators, this time we need a less than, so less than, and we're gonna again say X position. Oops, mouse is lagging a little bit there. X position is less than negative 220. Okay, that should be pretty close to the side over here. We want you to move uh, negative five steps. Okay, and then obviously if it reaches the side, we want it to delete the clone. So again, back in control, we're gonna say delete this clone. And then when we press play, you should notice that our ghosts start appearing, they get to the side and then they disappear. All right, so that's perfect. Um, so our ghost's sorta of working. The issue is at the moment, we can come up here and we can try and shoot our clones, but nothing happens. 
okay? So now we need to go about and set up the interaction that's going to delete both the beach ball and the ghost if it hits, okay? So let's start with the ghost. Uh, let's say uh, on the control menu, here we are. When I start as a clone, um, forever, because we want this to continually keep checking, if uh, we are touching the beach ball, okay? Then we're just going to delete this clone. That's it, All right? So now we press play and we come down here and we shoot him and he dies, okay? But our beach ball sort of keeps traveling. Now that could be an effect that you want to keep in your game where your beach ball uh, projectile does keep going through. But the issue we might have is you could sort of do this and then you'd never have to worry about dying, which is not ideal. So I'm just holding the space bar down. It just keeps making more and more copies of the beach ball, okay? So that might mean that you want to change how often this waits, but if you change that too much, sometimes it can make Scratch Cat a little bit uh, jittery when it moves. Okay, so if you wanna put that effect on the beach ball as well, you can. It's basically just copy this code and change that. Um, but I'm just gonna leave it there for now because it's obviously quite simple and easy. Um, quick recap, we've obviously got our Scratch Cat moving up and down. We have obviously got our beach ball uh, firing when we press the space button. And then we are creating lots of different clones of the beach ball and the ghosts that disappear if they make it to the sides of the map, which is great. Um, we could obviously code some interaction about that if the ghost touches Scratch Cat, you die. Um, but the purpose of this one was just a super quick tutorial about how to make the bullets actually work. So hopefully I'll be able to see you over in one of the next tutorials now where we uh, add a couple of other puzzle pieces together for our games. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed this one.